in the last couple of minutes yesterday <coughs> on example three in your class. Okay? Yeah. Example three was our first example solving graphically. And as I mentioned, in homework on two through 12, you're going to do what we did up above where you need to do it algebraically and you need to use a sign chart figuring out positives and negatives that way. So in 2 through 12, I expect to see a decent amount of work on your papers, not just answers. If you just show me answers, I'm probably not going to give you credit because there are methods I'm asking you to use here, okay? Now, starting at 14 on homework, you get to, you get to solve graphically. So solving graphically, first of all, we had to make the equation equal to zero, or in other words, in this case, less than or equal to zero. Less than or equal to zero, so that means I'm going to be looking for where the graph is negative, or in other words, on or below the x-axis, okay? So, I suggested that we graph this and look for our zeros. Now, I don't think I had graphed mine yet. If I had, it has since been deleted. So, let me get mine graphed. Is it right that they should all be this? Yep, they are all decimals, which is why you are being told to solve this one graphically, because otherwise, yeah. Okay, you have a graph that looks like such, yes? Yes. And you're using your calculator to find those lovely zeros. I'm going to put a sketch of the graph here. I'm not saying you have to put a sketch of the graph in homework, okay? But I'm putting a sketch of the graph because in the notes, I want you to be able to, if you come back to this problem, have some idea as to what we did. My graph looks something like that again. And notice there are one, two, three zeros that you need to find. Yes? Yes. And we're going to use our calculator to do that, right? I have my zeros listed to two decimal places. So what zeros did you come up with? Or have you come up with? Okay. 0 0.32. Yeah. I got that one. What else? 1.46 and? 4.46. 4.21. And here's the deal, guys. I am going with we are accomplished enough on these calculators that we know how to find those, right? Yes. And if not, ask for help if you're struggling because let's get this figured out, right? This should be a I know how to find my zeros using second count. Now, you need to know all three of those numbers to get your answer correct. If you don't know all three of those, you're not getting your answer correct. Okay. Less than or equal to zero means which portions of the graph matter? Okay. That piece is below the x-axis. That piece is below the x-axis, right? So when you give your answer, you're using those sections as your negatives. So this section before you get to 0.32, what is that in terms of x values? Okay. Negative infinity, because it's going infinitely left, yes, as it's going infinitely down, it's going infinitely left to what? To 0 0.32, because that's the point when it hits zero, yes? Now, there's always a question, parenthesis or bracket. bracket. Why bracket this time? It less than or equal to, it includes zero. At point three two, my graph is equal to zero. So unlike yesterday, we are using a bracket today because it says equal to. Union. And then I have another section that is negative. Where else are we negative? From 1.46 to 4.21 is where my graph is below the x-axis, right? If we were doing a number line, like a sign chart, we have a negative section between this, okay? Uh, parentheses or brackets? Okay, all brackets, the whole problem. 
Got it? And this is your answer. So in this case, is there really a lot of work to show? No. No. Maybe you had to solve the equation, make it equal to zero. Okay. Maybe you wrote down your zeros as you got them so you could keep track of them. Okay. I don't have to have a sketch. The sketch is just part of the notes. So I get it. There's not as much work to show on these. Now, if you back up to what we did yesterday, something like example two, do I expect to see some work there? Yeah. Yeah, because you're not supposed to be using the graph here. Okay? You're supposed to be, you can use the graph to grab these, but then I want to see your synthetic division and your sign chart. I want to see you practicing those skills. Okay? Okay. Backside. Backside, you'll notice the top section says solving a polynomial inequality with unusual answers. So we're going to look at just some unique ones. And then the bottom section is solving other inequalities. Um, and the other inequalities will be ones that may be more involve asymptotes and stuff. Okay? So let's, uh, I don't know if we'll do all of these, but we've got to at least hit some highlights. Fair enough? Okay. I may pick and choose some. So the nice part about these on the top part, they are already equal to zero, less than a zero, greater than zero. Okay. Um, with this in mind, these will fall into the section where you're allowed to graph. Okay. If we start, if you start trying to find zeros, you're just going to find imaginary zeros here. So I would go straight to the graph. Okay, I would go straight straight to the graph and graph y equals x squared plus 7 and 2x squared plus 1. Why we're looking at this one, isn't there? Yeah. X squared plus 7, 2x squared plus 1. My screen shows something like that. I can zoom out a little bit to know, right? To get a little bit more. What am I being asked for here? When is my graph what? Okay greater than or equal to, so I'm looking for when my graph is essentially positive, okay? And when we talk positive, then I want to know when is it on or above the x-axis. When is it on or above the x-axis? Where is my graph? Above it, yes? <laughs> when is my graph below the x-axis? Let me ask that. It's never. Never. My question is, when is the graph positive? It's always going to be up there, yes? Because I'm assuming that looks like a parabola-type shape. Okay, it's technically a quartic. If I uh, zoom out, I don't know. Yeah, it's just very skinny there. You can't really see anything much better. But because it is always up there, what's my answer going to be? To infinity and beyond? How about from infinity to infinity? Or in other words, negative infinity to positive infinity. That's just the answer. That's the answer. Okay, that's your answer because the graph, in this case, when is the graph positive? Well, the graph is always positive. Okay. Okay, B? So, same type thing. What's the question this time? Yeah. This time it's less than or equal. So we want to know when is the graph negative, or in other words, when is it 
says, says equal to again, on or below the x-axis. So you know what to graph, yes? You are graphing y equals x squared minus 3x plus 3 times 2x plus 5. Quantity squared. Darn it. No solution. When all else fails, no solution. Yeah, but it's usually wrong with you. You you love no solution. Kylie Kinney loves no solution. <laughs> That's the way I do. Wait, pause. That's not what I have either. Did I type in a long time? No, maybe I did. Nope, I did. It's not minus one. It's supposed to be plus five. That'll change your whole graph. Okay. Better? Yes. Yeah. Better? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we haven't even been in polar mode this year, so someone's been. What the polar mode? It feels a little polar out there. I don't use. Wait. Okay, we did have these calculators at the end of last year, didn't I? So at the end of pre calc is when we did polar mode. So since you hadn't used it all this year, whoever used it last year, that's what happened. Polar mode? Okay, now. Like water? Yes. In this case, what's my graph doing? We've got at least what we can see of it is a parabola shape again. Yeah. However, this parabola shape does it touch? No. Um. What? No. There's a space. Okay, I would zoom in maybe. Zoom box or Z box. Can you zoom in? Just arrow over to that. The point of the parabola there to zoom in. Oh, I think it's the smallest box. Maybe it does. Keep so if we want to see if it touches, could you zoom in again? Yes. Oh my yes. gosh, it does. Look, look how close it is. If it touches, what is that called there? A touch. A touch. It's a. Uh, it's a because it's positive. It has what could I? Or a I could check and see if it is a zero. 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 So if I do a zero, left bound, That's a skater. right bound, hey, guess what? There's a zero there. So does it touch? Yes. It does. There's a reason this falls into the unusual answer, okay? <laughs> so it does touch. Where does it touch at? Negative 2.5. Okay, so... That is key to answering this question correctly. It's never negative, but what did this question ask? Less than or equal to. Is it ever on the x-axis? Yes. One time at what value? Negative 2.5. So my solution to this problem is negative 2.5. Traditionally, when you have a one number answer like this, you write it with braces, oh, which are the curly kind. The squigglies. The squigglies. What? What's in the braces? The braces are what you traditionally use when your answer is just a one number. That one's so good. It's not a range of numbers. It's just one number. Okay? Now, let me ask you a question. What would the answer have been if this little equal to mark had not been here and it just said less than? No solution. No solution. Then we would say no solution. Okay? So, use your calculators to investigate, right? Had we just assumed that it didn't touch, we would have gotten it wrong. So. Is that going to be on the test? Not a clue. I don't remember. Okay, guys. See you real quick. You know what to do, yes? Less than zero, so what are we looking at? Negative. 
Where is the graph negative? I only want to know where it is below. Okay? So you're going to graph y equals x squared plus 2x plus 5 x minus 1 squared. You're telling me that one doesn't cross the line, but the last one did. What do you mean? I just zoom boxed it. It does cross it. So here's the question that we need to answer is, does it actually go below? Because that makes a difference. Wait, wait, am I? No, I zoomed to the max. You know me. You can't zoom more than that. <laughs> <laughs> so Z-box it, zoom in a couple of times. Actually, Again, can you check the zero? Yeah, I guess you. You can check the zero and see, because what it looks like, it looks like it probably just touches there at that one, I forget. I don't know. <laughs> There's a zero at one zero. So it means it's just doing a touch. Now, I'll give you a hint, guys. Notice right here, x minus one squared. If you solve this, x minus one equals zero, it's either going to touch or cross at one. Because it's squared, it is touching. Could you have the same thing up here on this one? 2x plus 5 equals 0. So x equals negative 5 halves. It would be touching because it's multiplicity 2. Remember that? This one, it didn't touch at all either way. So it's just it's a helpful clue there. So our graph on this one is a similar situation. It comes down, it's a parabola, and it touches at 1. This time the question was less than 0. So when is it less than 0? Never. Never. So, no solution. Did I show you empty set yesterday or the other day? Circle with a slash through it. I definitely put that. Okay, that's empty set. That would be appropriate too. And here's the deal. Graph is never below the x-axis. Let's just have the test be all this minus this. Yeah. The math is math. It's the big majority of it. Okay. Can you have a three extra? I like it. <laughs> okay. Are we ready to look at example five now? Uh, yes. Isn't this easy? There's going to be a little tricky yeah, to it. Okay. Now, example five. Again, it's solving the following inequalities on the calculator, graphically on the calculator. It tells you that in the directions. Um, there may be a section the book says using a sign chart, but I've told you several times, 2 through 12, sign chart. Everybody else? No. Graph. Okay? I don't care what the directions say. That's what I'm telling you. Now, on A, there is some information you can figure out by just looking at this. Okay? Um, okay. She says it cannot equal negative 3 or 1. I agree. What's going to be at negative 3 and 1? An asymptote. Those are places the denominator equals 0, and denominator equals 0 are vertical asymptotes. So without even graphing it, I know that there's going to be vertical asymptotes at negative 3 and 1. Okay? Now, what are we going to do to get the actual picture? It's already equal to 0, so you're going to graph 5 over x plus 3 
plus 3 over x minus 1. You already know you're expecting two vertical asymptotes, yes? Yep. And then as you graph this, what are we going to be looking for? Where is my graph? Uh, the, where is it? Negative. Okay. So where is it? Negative. Negative meaning where is it? Now, vertical asymptotes, there's two vertical asymptotes, so that tells me my graph is probably broken into three pieces. Yeah. Why do I need to know about the asymptotes? <laughs> Irrelevant. Okay. Just a second, let me get to the graph, and I will explain why it's going to be helpful. What would your course are Just kidding. <laughs> Okay. Now, as we look at this, okay, two vertical asymptotes. That means my graph is in three pieces. Those vertical asymptotes are going to help be my dividers of where my graph is negative. Okay, so I know what values to use here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and sketch this graph. Whoops, wrong thing. I'm going to go ahead and sketch this graph here so I can kind of talk about it. What did we say we had asymptotes at? And again, I'm just doing this so I have something to point at. Okay, now, here's the deal, guys. We're looking for where our graph is negative, below the x-axis. How many sections of the graph are negative? Two. two. So my answer is going to include nope. two pieces, yes? Okay, so I'm going to have interval, union, interval. Okay, now, these intervals are done in terms of x values. So this first piece here, this first piece, when is this graph negative? What are my x values that it's negative? Um, from, from negative infinity, right? Yeah. It's going infinitely left. How can it go from negative infinity to negative infinity? It's not going from negative. We want x we values. Okay, I want x values. So my graph is going infinitely left, which is negative infinity. And then, when does it stop being negative? Well, it's going infinitely down here. What, what x value does it stop being negative? Three. And three is, so Natalie, this is where I would say you need to know your asymptotes because otherwise what do we know here? Okay. So now... Can you trace on your calculator and kind of come up with logical that it's maybe at three? Certainly. So if I go over and trace there. They're all connected. They're not connected, but your it follows along there. So if you follow this x value, it's approaching negative three, negative 3.33, I'm still at negative y value. Negative three, I'm still at a negative y value. Still negative 3.03, .03, negative y value. Well, now all of a sudden I'm on the other side of negative 3, but I have a positive y value. So that's my reference. Okay. So the first piece, negative infinity to negative 3. Negative infinity always uses parentheses. What do I use with the negative 3? No, 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 no. Parentheses, because it's, it's the line here. It's a okay. line. Two things. Okay, so partially because it only says less than zero, but here's the deal. Will my graph ever touch the x value of negative three? No. No, because it's an asymptote. So because it's an asymptote, I'm going to say parentheses. Okay, union. Now, I have this other piece that's negative, yes? Yeah. When does it start being negative? negative. At what x value? 
the y value is 0. The x value is not 0. Oh, wait, we have to count. 0.73. That's my guess. So somewhere, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the point where the graph does what? Crosses, crosses the x-axis, which means I'm looking for a 0. Left bound. Right bound. Yes. Where does it cross the x-axis? Negative one half. Negative one half. Well, negative zero point five. Exactly. I'm going negative negative zero point five. Negative one half. Whatever you want. So, when does this graph start being negative again? Negative one half. When does it stop being negative? It's going infinitely down, and it's running along this asymptote of 1. So negative 1 half to 1. Okay. So the 1 is a parenthesis no matter what because it's an asymptote. So negative 1 half depends. It's a point, so it could be a bracket. But what did the question say? Just less than 0. So that means it is a... Parenthesis. Okay. Yeah. It's all about using the cat there. I know, not as easy as the above section, but it's doable. No? Yeah. I haven't sold that one yet. She's giving me this look like, dang it. Okay. Let's look at B. So, a couple of things on B. Greater than or equal to zero says I want to know when my graph is positive. Okay. On or above the x-axis. Okay. You're going to graph it. Now, I'm still going to tell you to look at the equation because there is some helpful information we can get from the equation. It has a zero of three. What? Right? X minus three? No. Why not? I'm joking. It does. It does. It's right here. And that's Why actually really nice? helpful. <laughs> Why is it a Nike symbol? Not in math. Not, not in math. math. <laughs> not in math. Now. Thank you for Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. I like Now, okay, there's my attempt at my Nike symbol. There are two important pieces you need to be able to identify here. Both of those important pieces you can identify, we can use this equation to find, okay? Katie mentioned a zero of three. Folks, what do you notice right here? If you set x minus three equal to zero, then we know at x equals 3, there is a 0. Okay. Now, this x plus 1, it's under the square root. I would set it equal to 0 also. Or, actually, it's underneath the square root. What do you know about numbers underneath the square root? Um, positive or negative. Well, underneath the radical, they have to be positive. <laughs> So greater than or equal to zero. That was a statement. If you could go back to domain, guys, when you had something under a square root, I said set it greater than or equal to zero because it has to be positive. So what that says is that this whole graph is greater than or equal to negative one. What that tells me is where does my Nike swoosh begin here on the left? It begins at negative one. 
Where does it cross through the x-axis? At three. Okay. And officially, my Nike swoosh keeps going in that way. Those are what I would call key points. And they're going to help me get my answer correct. Okay. Now, the question on this one is, when is my graph positive? So which section of the graph am I looking at? I want that piece right there. How do I express that answer? Three to infinity. Why three? Because that's when it crosses through the x-axis. Okay, infinity, I'll give you that one. That's a parenthesis. What about the three? It said greater than or equal to. Now, let me ask you a question. What if they had asked when is this graph less than zero? Less than zero would be what to what? Negative one to three. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. If you try and trace to get that negative one value, you're going to get yourself in trouble because it's hard to tell. Okay, right there, negative 1.06, my graph doesn't exist. At negative 0 0.9, it does exist. I don't want to see that negative 0.9 on the test. I want to see that you understand it's negative 1. Okay? Okay, so those were some key points. Okay, one more. What are we looking for? Okay, less than, generally speaking, negative. Less than or equal to means on or below. Now, okay, again, you're going to graph the basic, yes? I can tell you a couple of key points before I ever graph it. I don't know what they're going to be yet, but I can tell you there's going to be some key points at whatever x minus 2 equals 0 gives me and whatever x uh, plus 3 equals 0 gives me. So that can be helpful if you use your equation. Key points at x minus 2 equals 0, or in other words, x equals 2, and at x plus 3 equals 0, or in other words, x equals negative 3. Okay? I don't know what's happening because I haven't graphed it yet, but stuff's going to be happening there. Do you remember where your absolute value is? Yeah. Math and then the next page. Okay, math and next page. So if you error over to num, or what I tend to do is alpha F2. Those are good. And here, does it matter? No, as long as you know. Do I have the right pieces? X minus 2 over X plus 3. Okay. What is happening, are you going to guess, at x equals 2 now that you see the graph? I'm going to guess it's the graph. There's probably a zero there, isn't there? Probably. Can you confirm it by doing some work? Yeah. What are you guessing is at x equals negative 3? No. That looks like a vertical asymptote, yes? Do you see how I didn't necessarily know that I I didn't know what I knew. Does that make sense? But I knew something. My graph kind of puts it all together for me. Okay. Well. And these will go quicker on your own because you don't have to show the graph and all that, right? Based on what we know, what do we say? 
It's a vertical asymptote at negative 3. She's throwing stuff back there. It's not too long. Okay. Now, and you can check that zero value there, can't you? If I go check that zero, because I can tell it crosses the x-axis somewhere in there. But notice there's a 2. Okay. So, what do we want? Negative. Infinity. When's it negative? Negative infinity to negative 3. So, negative infinity to negative 3. Negative infinity, always parenthesis. Are we going to touch negative 3? No. No, no negative 3 is an asymptote. I don't care that it's less than or equal to. It's an asymptote. I'm not touching negative 3. So, parenthesis. Funky parenthesis. Okay. Union. When does my when else is my graph negative? Two. Negative well, it starts being at no. negative at <laughs> on the other side of negative three. Is it going to touch negative three? Oh. No. No. When does it stop being negative? Two. When it crosses through the x-axis at two. Touch two. Do I touch two? Yes. yes. Do I care that I touch two? Yes. Yes. It says less than or equal to. Two. So now it's a bracket. Boom. Okay. Obviously, you're going to need graphing calculators to do most of the homework, okay? So, it's not written on here. It should probably be 2 through 12. I expect to see the sign chart information. Okay. All others, you can graph. And you have a few minutes.